Welcome to the Real Estate Investing Show. I'm Clayton Morris. So glad to have you here. I'm the founder of Morris Invest, which is a full service rental real estate company. And on this show, we answer your real estate related questions. It could be taxes, finances. It doesn't matter. We try to tackle it all here on the show. So today is our Q&A episode where you ask questions and I respond. You can leave us a voicemail question by going to our website, morrisinvest.com slash Clayton. Again, that's morrisinvest.com slash Clayton. Click on the little recording icon and you can leave us like a 30 second voicemail question. Very excited for today's show. We've got three great questions from three great listeners. Let's start off with Michelle. Take it away, Michelle. Hello there. Hi, my name is Michelle. And I've been following you for a while now, Clayton, and I love all the free resources that you've put out. And I had a question, though. I'm a little short on time, um, and I was wondering if you had like an all-encompassing resource or, um, you know, like, I don't know if it would be like a blog or a checklist or a video or something that kind of gave me an overview on everything I needed to know um, from like the benefits of real estate investing and how to get started and financing and like what the process is like um, and, and like how to tell if a property or market is a good investment or not and questions I should be asking and all of that. Um, Do you have a resource like that that I can check out um, just to kind of save some time? And I mean, I love, digging into your podcast and the YouTube videos um, when I can. But if you had something I could just kind of sit down and watch and share with my husband, um, that would be ideal. So do you have anything like that? Can you point me in the right direction? And thank you again for all you do. Thank you so much, Michelle. So this question, it's funny. We, we, we had this question. I couldn't reveal it until now. Um, and so Michelle's question comes at a perfect time because actually we are about to launch our webinar the Morris Invest webinar, and really, really excited about it. We're going to do it live. So I hope everyone can join us on the webinar, um, and we're going to promote it. It's very simple to do to get on the email list so you know, you'll know you be notified when we're going to do it. And we're going to, we're going to be live so you can ask any questions about the entire process of what it takes to start getting in, you know, investing in real estate and how to buy a property for the first time. What are the best markets to invest in? What do we look for in property managers? All of those things are going to be in this webinar. We've literally spent about a year working on it, and so we can finally announce it. So if you want to be a part of it, we'll have a link below so you can take advantage of it and join us on this webinar. Um, You can also join our newsletter so you'll get the email. Just go to morrisinvest.com slash newsletter. Again, that's morrisinvest.com slash newsletter. And what's great about this webinar, we're going to, you know, give you the history uh, of not only our company, we're going to give you the history of, you know, the, the, like how to, how to get started in real estate investing, um, my history, and we're going to walk you through step by step by step. Um, and it's going to be very dense. It's going to be a lot, you know, a lot of learning material. You're going to walk away. My goal with this was at the end of this webinar, you're going to know everything you need to know about getting started in real estate investing. So Michelle, I hope that is helpful. Um, but please, yes, join our newsletter list. So you'll at least get the email notification when we're about to go live with the, with the webinar. And uh, I hope to see you there and bring your questions, and I will be answering them live. I'm very, very excited about that. So thank you, Michelle, for that question. All right, here, our next question is from Don. Hi, Clayton, this is Don Elliott. I got one question about uh, one of your podcasts. You were talking about HELOCs. Um, I was wondering if I can use my HELOC to pay off some of the homes that I have leveraged. as you know, I used Funding Grow with the 18 month 0% financing, and it's coming to an end pretty soon. Um, instead of me t- doing a cash refi, I was wondering if I can just use my HELOC. Um, also, I wanted to know if I could use the HELOC um, as, as business versus personal so I can keep my personal income. Uh, to myself and just use my rental income to pay off my HELOC. I know you had talked about commingling and that word kind of scares me. I just don't want to get in trouble. Um, Look forward to listening to you and uh, with your advice. Appreciate it. Bye. Thank you, Don, for the question. So again, I'm not a financial advisor or a tax accountant. So definitely talk with your tax accountant on some of those particular issues. But I will say that, you know, you can use a HELOC for anything. You know, and think of it, I mean, 
people mortgage their homes all the time in order to keep their business afloat. So that's not illegal from my understanding. I mean, you can absolutely use a home equity line of credit to do whatever. You could buy computers for your business. It doesn't matter where the funding is coming from as long as it's being captured correctly and reported to the IRS in the form of, you know, for, for business purposes. Um, but again, talk with your CPA about that. You shouldn't have any problems using that. Um, you know, people will use equity in their homes in order to start a business all the time or to use it for business expenses. So that shouldn't be any kind of an issue. Think of it just like getting a loan from your, you know, your, your father, right? All right, son, here you go. You know, here's a, here's a business loan for you to get started with your business. It doesn't matter that it's a, a loan to you from your father. It doesn't really matter. It just matters how you're paying for things and cap capturing expenses for taxes. So that piece of it aside, uh, as far as using a home equity line of credit in order to pay down debt, absolutely. Um, I've written a whole book on it. <laughs> so it's called How to Pay Off Your Mortgage in Five Years. You And the, the subtitle is really how to use your home equity line of credit to this, to this advantage. Because you know, when you understand a home equity line of credit, you're understanding that it's different than a normal mortgage. And, and, and basically, you know, your two biggest enemies when it comes to mortgages is time and interest. Um, and so the, the, the difference with a 30 year amortization mortgage is that you, you have that clock, you know, you have that 30 years. And so you're paying, if you got a $200,000 house, you're likely paying $500,000 for the house in total at the end of that cycle or even more depending on your interest rate. So, but if you can, if you can slaughter that timeline by using a home equity line of credit and the way that we talk about it in the book is you can take, let's say you've got a $30,000 HELOC on your, from your equity in your home. Well, why not take that HELOC and you like take 20 or 30,000 of it and throw it at the primary balances of your debt. And so what I teach you in the book is taking that home equity line of credit, whether it's 20, 30,000, and then firing that at the principal balance of your main mortgage. And when you do that, you're cutting the time down significantly on your amortization schedule. That's the beauty of it. And they're two different financial products. So you're using one financial product to, to slaughter another financial product at the end of the day is what it's about. Um, the beauty of the home equity line of credit as a weapon is that, you know, you start with a zero balance and you can use as much as you want. So you can rinse and repeat. You could take 10,000 of that and fire it right at the principal balance. Now you've got a $10,000 debt, right? On the HELOC. And then you pay it back out of your salary or whatever goes to 8,000. Now it's at 7,000. Now it's a, it goes all the way down to zero. And then one, once again, you're, you take another $10,000 check and you fire it at the home, at, you fire it at your primary mortgage or your rental mortgages, whatever they happen to be, and fire it at those debt pieces. Um, but in my, you, I want you to weigh all of these things, Don, because you might find that money is so cheap right now that if you're getting a 3% mortgage or you've got a 4% mortgage on these rental properties, like, you know, who cares? I, you know, it's free money. So you've got a, a, you've got an appreciating asset that's performing better than the interest rate. It's a hedge against inflation, right? So if it, inflation's at 2%, it's about to go up. Inflation is starting to run hot and the Fed is going to begin to taper down on its program and the, you know, on Wall Street and inflation goes up. Your house is still performing well above inflation. That's why I love real estate. Your cash flow is coming in consistently. Your tenants are well taken care of. They're paying their rent on a regular basis. Um, and they are providing you equity every month. They're paying your mortgage for you. So that's how you get this incredible internal rate of return because you're using the bank's money. You have a tenant paying and building equity for you. You may, I, you might even consider saying, you know what, I want to take that HELOC and buy another rental property. <laughs> Forget paying down that debt right now. You know, who cares about the debt? Eventually it'll be paid off by the tenants. You can add another asset to your portfolio. So all of these things to consider. I, I like to say, hey, we used our HELOC for both. We bought assets with it and the 50% of it we put towards debt. So kind of way, it depends on how much of a home equity line of credit you actually have to work with. Anyway, Don, thank you for, for subscribing to the show. And I think I see it done uh, on our live show all the time, uh, pop it in there. So thanks, Don, for being a great part of our audience daily. Uh, over on our Morning Invest live show as well. Thank you so much.
Are you new to real estate investing and you're wondering whether or not you can self-manage your properties? Well, we want to tell you about Rent Ready. Rent Ready is a really awesome property management software platform that allows you to manage your business from your computer or your phone. You can collect rent online, get paid, find the perfect tenant with their screening and listing services, and get your leases signed with the click of a button. And tenants really love using Rent Ready's app as well. It's super easy to use. They can pay rent using a card or ACH transfer or cash. They can set up auto pay, get renter's insurance if you require it, and even build their credit score through Rent Ready's new credit reporting feature. Did we also mention that Rent Ready is unlimited? That means that all of this is a flat price. There's no tricks or no hidden fees, no upcharges. Rent Ready is designed for people who manage their own properties, so you don't have to worry about paying more for building your business. You can start managing and scaling your rental properties without scaling costs. And Rent Ready has given us an amazing deal to pass along to our listeners of the show. You can get Rent Ready's annual plan for only $54. Yeah, $54 for the whole year at rentready.com. And when you use our special code, investing, that's rentready.com with code investing. That's R E N T R E D I dot com. And the code is investing, I N V E S T I N G, at rentready.com to get Rent Ready's annual plan for only $54. Uh, all right, our next question is from Benjamin. I couldn't even read it, and that's my middle name. <laughs> I'm like, what is it? Oh, it's like Bert. Burn, Benjamin? Oh, it's Benjamin. That's my middle name, Clayton Benjamin Morris. Okay, Benjamin, take it away. Hi, Clayton. My question is, how do you know if you're looking on the MLS what kinds of homes that you can renovate and make a profit off of once you um, get it valued by a uh, appraiser? Thank you. All right, so we got a house flipping question. Now, I am not a house flipper. Um, uh, you know, it, this is an incredible, you know, th this is, if this is the route you want to go, instead of being an, I, I'm a real estate investor. Um, and, you know, that's one thing I want to be, uh, be very clear about here. You know, there's differences here. Like, I'm a real estate investor because I buy homes and keep them. If you're a house flipper, you're not a real estate investor. Like I always stop those people on their tracks. It's like, yeah, I'm a real estate investor. I'm like, oh, what do you do? Like, oh, I flip houses. That's not a, that's not an investor. That's a job, right? You're only as good as your next flip. And then you're getting a big paycheck in which you have to pay capital gains taxes on it. Significant capital gains taxes after you sell the property, right? Because you're not living in the property for two years as your primary residence, in which case you could avoid capital gains taxes. But so you're flipping it. Great. Hey, I love flippers. I've worked with them for many years in the wholesaling world, and I'd find a great property. I'd give it to them to flip. They'd pay me a ten, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar finder's fee for finding this great property, and they'd do all the work. And then nine months later, they'd sell it after they had all the contractors in there and did all the permitting and everything else. It's a job, and you need to know what you're doing to do a proper house flip. So having said that, if you already in that market and you, that's something you absolutely want to do. If a property is on the MLS, chances are it's probably, probably not going to be what you're looking for. Now, that's not to say that you can't find great deals on the MLS. What I would consider, though, doing is reaching out to a number of different real estate agents who are active in your area. That is to say, I want you to go on to meetup.com in your area. And in local meetups, I want you to look for a local RIA meeting, R-E-I-A meeting, real estate investor group, okay? And in that investor group, I want you to become friends with the real estate agents who are active in this group. There are a lot of real estate agents, but um, most of them don't know anything about real estate investing or flipping. They simply are retail uh, agents, meaning they want your house to look great. They will list it for you. They will do all the legwork and paperwork and get it listed and sold. Okay. They don't, they hate dealing with ugly duckling properties, properties that you're going to go in and renovate. Real estate agents do not like them dealing with them. However, there are some, and these are enterprising real estate agents who are absolutely plugged into this environment and will be a great resource to you. I would try to find those people in this real estate group who are active. They get listings all the time. Some are known as pocket listings where they get them and they, they have them in the office but they don't list them yet on the MLS. 
and they provide them to a few investors that are going to be doing house flips. So they don't even hit the MLS. They're like keeping them in their pocket, basically. Now, I know there's certain laws that are discouraging pocket listings, but it still goes on. And in fact, it's allowed if this is going to be an exclusive listing with a particular brokerage. So I would find these real estate agents, say, hey, I'm a house flipper. Uh, I would like you to start sending me deals that could potentially be worth renovating. Typically, you're going to find a house that's sold as is, meaning it's going to need, you know, they're not going to do any fixing it up when they sell it. It's going to need a lot of work. Um, and then you can start that process. Um, you know, I wouldn't even waste money on an appraiser. There are plenty of websites that do it for you. Do it just a basic back of the page BPO um, appraisal online, even using something as simple as Zillow's Zestimate. You can look at Redfin, Zillow, use their Zestimate, pull a bunch of comparable properties that are within a quarter mile of that property that you're thinking about buying and make sure it has comparable square footage, bedroom, bathroom count, see what that house sold for after it was fixed up. You know, find three houses that sold that were really nice in post-renovation fix-ups. And then the average of those three prices is going to be your comp for what you think you could sell that house for after you buy it and put, you know, renovations in it, you should be able to acquire this property. Your goal is to try to acquire it at about 60 cents on the dollar, 60 cents on the dollar, 50 cents on the dollar. Uh, that's the goal because then you have margin to play with in order to sell it at 98, you know, at 100% of the dollar, if that makes sense. So again, it is a job. I would encourage you to take some trainings on this before you jump into it. Um, but make sure you connect with some local real estate agents. If you're interested in properties that are on the multiple listing service, that's one way to do it. Of course, then you could go the whole wholesaling route or work with wholesalers um, and find off-market properties that way as well. Perhaps Craigslist and other places for sale by owner sections. Um, that's a great resource as well. So I hope you found this helpful, Benjamin. Thank you so much for the great questions. Again, if you would like to leave me a voicemail question, please do go to morrisinvest.com slash Clayton. And don't forget to grab that, uh, become a part of our newsletter uh, because we are going to have our webinar and I'm very excited for it. And I want you to be there with us on our webinar. Again, we'll have a link in the show description and show notes down here. Um, but just go to morrisinvest.com slash newsletter to make sure you are on our newsletter. And we will be telling you through that email all about the webinar that's upcoming. So thank you, everyone. Now go out there, take action, become a real estate investor. I believe it's the number one way to build wealth and store wealth for your family. We'll see you next time.